Well, already, you two. I'll try something new here. Bring you guys along for some work I do out here in the garage. This is my 416H. It is a 90, uh, 94. I gotta write it on, though, otherwise I forget. I got too many of them. Anyway, weather's crappy outside. It's nice and warm here in the garage. Figured I'd get some work done on this thing before mowing season comes around. Because believe it or not, this 94 wheel horse is what I cut my grass with. Had a zero turn. It did fine, but man, I tell you what, I started using this thing and I was just blown away at how good it cuts. So the reason it's in here, the, this, I believe it was this front tire here, it's dry rotted and cracked. It has got a hole in it. I have to roll it around somewhere for you guys to see it. Whenever it sits for a couple of weeks, it's flat. Um, these turf tires, they work fine. If it wasn't leaking, I wouldn't even be doing this, but I've got some tri-ribs I'm gonna put on this thing. So I figured while I'm doing that, I'll go ahead and sandblast and repaint the front wheels, do a little cleanup on this thing. And uh, yeah, stay in here where it's warm and I don't know, see what you guys think of the video. If you end up liking it, I'll bring you along for some more of the stuff I do on these things because trust me, they're always breaking or leaking or batteries are dead or who knows what. So yeah, I don't know, follow along. To answer your questions, no, I'm not gonna use jack stays. I wouldn't so much call this a tutorial, because I mean, I think everybody out there knows how to, uh, you know, pull a dust cap off and pull a cotter pin, but I don't know. I'm sure someone out there will get some entertainment out of watching this. What's funny is I had all this apart, oh, I don't know, come fall time, and checked everything out, repacked these bearings and cleaned all this stuff up. And it's amazing how dirty it gets. Oh, come on. All right, be that way. Oh yeah. Best part about messing with this shit is the grease. Definitely was well lubricated. Somewhere in the midst of all this nasty shit is a cotter pin. Oh yeah, there it is. Can't get that out. Anybody that's worked on stuff before knows that cotter pins can either be Really easy to get out or really difficult. Everybody does it different. This is how I do it. Needle nose hammer. Comes on out. Since I had this apart not that long ago, there shouldn't be any rust or anything that's gonna cause us trouble. Outer washer. Is there another one? I don't know, maybe not. Nope. All right, here we go. There's one. I won't bore you guys with the other side. All right, guys, got them both off. Went ahead and pulled the valve core out of this one. You can see now how dry rotted these are. Trust me, they're not worth saving. I could put a tube in them, but I tell you what, by the time, I don't know if you price tubes for these things, spend a little extra, a few more dollars, you can get new tires instead, so. We'll go ahead and pour the valve core out of this one and get this one bleeding, and then we'll get them over to the bead breaker. I'll bring you guys back for that. You can watch me suffer. All right, guys, let's see if we can't get these beads broke down. This is just a Harbor Freight Special tire changer. Um, they're pretty cheap. They're definitely worth their, worth their weight in gold whenever it comes to breaking beads. It usually works pretty good, even on these smaller ones. So I don't know, we'll see if we can get these. Usually it takes two or three passes to get them. Oh, come on now. 
There we go. That one's done. too bad I've done a lot worse now I know this thing's good for busting beads on tires uh, but when it comes to doing lawnmower tires mini bikes anything that's got a sealed bearing um, instead of like a bolt pattern this thing's designed for the wheel to slide over this goes on and then you've got this threaded cap that goes on top that holds everything in place and you can use it to actually dismount but like I said Sealed bearings, it won't work. This diameter is too big. I've thought about trying to modify this thing to make it work, um, but I'll show you what I did instead. You guys ever have them ideas that just look better on paper, and then you spend all the time putting them together and they're still just not quite as good as you'd hope they'd be? Yeah, that's how this was. Had some scrap metal laying around, got some threaded rod, and this thing's designed to wear. Hang on, hard to do one-handed. That sits down on top of it got a jam nut locks it all in place the problem being no matter how tight you get that it's not enough to hold the wheel in place where you're trying to uh, break the tire off so what i'm thinking about doing if you guys can see that i think i might be able to weld a bolt something to go straight down through that into the base to hold the actual wheel in place and i don't know we'll see if we can't figure something out all right, guys, got a little hole marked out. Thinking if I just drill a couple of holes, I can use whatever, junk bolt, screwdriver, something to drop down through the wheel weight holes to hold it in place. So that's what we're going to try. got some play in it we'll try something a little bit bigger and if not probably get a long bolt and actually lock it in place but i just need something to hold this to keep it from moving on me so i've got something to push against whenever i'm trying to get the tire off because you guys will see me struggle here in a minute trying to get these off all right guys i'll show you what i ended up with had this long uh three eighths bolt in the toolbox it's not ideal but I think it's gonna work. Got a hole drilled through there, got the bolt ran down with a jam nut. Just something to kind of help. So yeah, I don't know, sail or fail, you guys will be along to witness it, so we'll see how it goes. It's gotta be better than what I was doing before, but got some tire goop. We'll throw that on there and see if we can't get this off. All right guys, got some goop here. Stuff works pretty good. I think I bought a little Riley's for like, I don't know, it was cheap. 10 bucks or something for a gallon of it. I will say it does work better than spit. I've been a couple wheels doing this stuff without using the, the right lube to try to get these things off. Especially on these older tires. They, uh, 
you know, rust builds up around the bead. They shrink, they rust jack. They can be real bare to get off. So we'll see how this works. Again, I do not have the proper tools for this. Just gonna use what I got. See, before I had that jam bolt in there, the damn wheel would spin on me, and I'd end up trying to hold the wheel, and it's just a bear. So, let's see if we can't keep this going. Funny enough, there is a tube in there. Huh. I probably should invest in an actual tire spin. But what fun is that, you know? Messing me up. Oh, yeah. Helps if I push that back through. Still holding up. All right. There we go. Get the other one put on there, and uh, I'll bring you all back when the other one's done. Well, I changed my mind. I'm going to bring you guys along for this one because it just dawned on me. That one had a tube in it. I can tell by the valve scan that this one does not. So that tells me that that one has been apart recently to have that tube put in. So this one might actually fight us a little bit. The other one might have just got lucky. Oh yeah, ain't no tube in this one. No, nope, still wasn't bad. Hey guys, I never get this lucky. You guys should start filming everything. Oh, yeah. Here, I'll show you guys some of this yumminess in here. All right. Check that out. Oh, yeah. That is some grade A quality stuff. I don't know if that was slime that somebody put in there. Or if that's just dirt and dust and everything else gathering over time. Yeah, you guys can see that rust. The wires in the belts, they start rusting over time and they call it rust jacking. And usually it forms a super tight seal on the bead, makes it a pain in the butt to get off. But that one ain't too bad. I've seen a lot worse than that. So we'll somewhat get them cleaned up and get them put in the sand blaster and yeah we'll go from there see what we're uh, see what we're dealing with all right guys with the magic of youtube we fast forward two days and i'm actually out here working on these things again i uh sat around admiring my work the other night and had a few cold snacks and decided to call it a night so i got one wheel already cleaned up i'm gonna get this one cleaned up uh, normally i do this outside with a pressure washer you know but I don't know where you guys are at here right now in the Midwest. We've had a cold snap. It's like six degrees right now. So I'm gonna use the wrong tool for the job. Again, I'm gonna use a parts washer, clean the grease up and uh, try to get an idea of how bad the rust actually is. And then we'll decide how much we wanna actually sandblast. So yeah. Try to get the 
Oh, it's Nick said three soft edit. And dirt, you really ain't that bad. The more dirt I take off, the more I'm rethinking the decision we came. I might just clean them up. If anything, this blasting's gonna be the usual, all the stuff builds up. So, this is just your. I think I got this tractor supply, parts washer. Um, you can put a high dollar cleaner in them. I had this one out for about four years. I think whenever I did this, I just put a decent fuel in it. It's not as good as cleaner, but that's fine for me. And if I'm cleaning parts, I'm not planning on painting it. Works out good too. It's kind of treats the rest and keeps it getting worse. And it's a lot cheaper than my like, mineral spirits or whatever. And uh, far less flammable as well. guys I got both of them cleaned up you know actually they're in really good shape for as old as these are I've seen them a lot worse than this really the worst of it's just where the you know typical where the bead of the tire sits and I mean that's in really good shape so I'm trying to decide if I want to blast off this original powder coat or not I don't know. I'm not too sure. I mean, if I do repaint them, it's really not going to make too much of a difference because they're going to have center caps on them, but I don't know. Decisions, decisions. Hmm. I don't know. I'm th we might try it. I'm going to knock these bearings out. Obviously, you want to get all that grease out before you put it in your blast cabinet, and uh, that shit will just stick to that grease, and you'll never get it all out. So let me knock these bearings out get these set up in the blaster. Now a smarter man would have done the right thing and ordered new wheel bearings to put in these, but I did not. I haven't had any issues with it, but Let's see if we can't get these knocked out and see what they look like. There's one. That one's missing a dust shield on that one side. It's probably on the spindle still. Let's see if we can't get this other one out. It's coming. Should be enough room there. There we go. Just had to put my purse down. Same with that one, that's actually in pretty good shape. Oh yeah, rolls good, no noise. Probably just gonna reuse these. Yeah, if I was a smart man, like I said, and patient, I'd just order some new ones off Amazon, but who's got time for that? All right, I'm gonna get the bearings knocked out this other wheel and Get this grease cleaned up and we'll go from there. All right guys, get the bearings knocked out. We got most of the grease cleaned out of it. We're gonna throw this in the old sand blaster here. See if we can't clean it up. This is just the run the mill blast cabinet you can get at Harper Freight. Um, it gets really bad reviews. A lot of people hate this thing. And I did some research before I pulled the trigger on it. Figured out that you can convert it to a gravity feed instead of a siphon for about $30 of plumbing fittings from your hardware store. So that's what I've done. I'm running, I think it's the fine grit blast media from Tractor Supply. <coughs> I 
it does pretty good. Like I said, it's worked good for me so far. I think the main problem people have with these is they try pushing them with too small of a compressor. And I get it because compressors are ridiculously expensive right now. I end up finding a good deal on a, a four cylinder uh, Campbell Haasfield compressor. It does pretty good with it. So yeah, I'll uh, try to bring you guys in so you can see some of this. It's gonna hard to see whenever it's actually I'm working because I got a dust collector set up, but it's still pretty cloudy in there. So I'll see if I can get some footage for you guys while I'm doing it. All right, guys, the magic of YouTube, that only took about 30 seconds, but in all reality, that was about an hour of sandblasting, so they're not perfect. I got most of the big rust chunks knocked off. Well, a few there really were, but cleaned the beads up. Mostly just ended up, you know, doing a rough sand on this powder coat because it is in really good shape, and it was giving me quite the, quite the fight. So I'm gonna get these cleaned up now and uh, get them ready for paint. Again, nothing too fancy. Probably just gonna throw some primer on the inside and then I'll end up painting probably a silver metallic, somewhat close to what factory would have been, but not exact. So yeah, I'll bring you guys back for that. All right guys, got them wiped down with some glass cleaner. Gonna hit them with some primer first. Gonna be using Rust-Oleum Flat White Primer. Uh, not because it's the right thing to use, but because it's all I got. So, yeah, we're going to throw some paint on these, let them tack up, and then we'll hit them with the good stuff. Oh, yeah, I got nice running it. Perfect. Doesn't get fancy with it. Oh yeah. Look at all them runs. Well, it went a little heavy on that one. Rust-Oleum metallic bright coat finish put on it. Rich, shiny, finished, fast drying. Oh man, that's like Kentucky Chrome right there. My fancy paint rig here. We'll see if I can keep the runs off of it. I think I learned my lesson from doing the primer. Oh yeah. We'll let that tack up and I'll do the other one. All right, do the other side now. Hmm. Oh wait, let's be smart about this. Oh, look at that. Now we can turn it.
Not too bad. All right, guys, paint's pretty much dry. I'm gonna get ready to throw some valve stems in these and get these tires mounted. And I realized I haven't even showed you guys what I'm putting on it. These are, what brand are these? I couldn't even tell you. D-Stone. I think I got these from PriorityTire.com, cheapest place I could find. They are a 4-0-8, um, which kind of leads me to the next problem I'm going to have. This is the elephant in the room I've been avoiding. Get my tape measure out here. These wheels are about five inches wide, bead to bead. These tires being four inches wide, it's going to be tricky. Now, a way that you can remedy that is to run tubes. Um, I was trying to stay away from that. I don't like using tubes. It seems like every time I do, I never get them right. I put a hole in them. And actually on the 3088 I've got over here, these are six inch wheels and these have got the, I think those are 3.5-6s, the 350-6s. You can tell they're ballooned out a little bit. Um, with these, I did use tubes because they came with the kit and they work fine. But like I said, I'm gonna try to avoid using tubes, so. Yeah, we'll get the bearings tapped back in these, get new valve stems put in and get it ready over there in the tire changer and see if we can't get these mounted. All right, we skipped forward a little bit. I saved you guys having to listen to me cuss and complain and struggle. Again, this is not the proper way. Due to this skinny tire, it's trying to put both beads on at once. And typically you don't want that. But if it works, it works. Maybe, hopefully. All right. Oh yeah, that's gonna be fun trying to mount. All right, see if we get some air in it. All right guys, I'm about to call the feet. I put the old ratchet strap on it as tight as I could get it and I still can't get this bead to seat. So, save the best for last. We're gonna try the old ether treatment. Probably not going to work, but you know, maybe it will. So yeah, guys, like I was saying, we're going to use some tubes to get these mounted up, you know. Yeah, I spent like entirely way too long the other night trying to get this thing to mount up. I had to ratchet strap out, ether, anything I could do trying to air this thing up and it just wasn't going to happen. So it's about three days later now. I ordered some on Amazon because they're a whole lot cheaper than going to like tractor supply. So yeah, I think finally, like a week after I started this project, we're gonna finish getting these mounted up and get them put back on the tractor so I can move on to other fun things because to be quite frank with you guys, I'm kind of over this. So moving on. All right, so putting the tube in a tire, not that hard. I'm not really gonna make this a tutorial because again, I do things kind of wrong and you know I don't want to teach you guys the wrong way to do something but essentially you want half your tire mounted you want the other half open um, so you can start fishing this in you can kind of see I don't know if you guys see that this is the valve stem hole here it's on the top side of the wheel so whenever you go to put this in obviously you want your valve stem facing uh, the same side that the hole is in the wheel so we're just going to start fishing this in there's really no proper technique to this that I've found. It's just kind of a pain in the ass. And luckily, since I already went through and sandblasted these wheels and, and painted them, we shouldn't have any rough edges because that's the main killer of the inner tube is uh, rust inside the wheel. It'll poke a hole in that tube and you'll be doing this again. around get it to where you need it the goal is to make sure you get all the way around the wheel you don't have to worry about getting completely in the tire yet just make sure you get it around the wheel so that we got to drop down and we'll spin it to where I can fish this valve stem up through the hole and there it is. 
Now what I do, guys do stuff differently, get a little pair of vice grips on this valve stem to keep it from pulling through whenever you're mounting the tire, even airing it up really. You wanna get something on there to keep this from pulling back through the wheel. Otherwise you'll again be doing this over again. So I just put one of those tools on there just to hold it. So now, the main thing is not pinching the tube when you're mounting the tire. Because again, the tubes are not that durable. Put some more goop on here. Depending on the tire, sometimes you can get lucky and just walk it on like so. What I usually end up doing, getting a small pair of vice grips, just so you don't lose the progress you've made on the bead. it over making sure you don't get the tube got that I'll scoop my vice grip down scoot it down Once you get to a certain point, it'll go a lot easier. About got it there. Whether you're doing this with a tube or not, you want to be very gentle. Because I have bent wheels doing this, torn sidewalls, it's getting a little too a little too aggressive with it. Come on. When in doubt, let's get a bigger tool. A little bit more. There it is. All right, guys, once you get it on there, Look around and make sure you don't have any tubes showing on top or bottom. Make sure you got your valve stem up. Get your air chuck. Little bit of pressure. Oh, I about lost it. Ah, oh, come on now. Try that again. <laughs> looks so goofy on this wide wheel. That's funny. Well, the beads are mounted. 
grab a uh, air truck, see what pressure we got in there. Well, that's about way too much, about 17 PSI. Most tubes you only want like seven or eight pounds in, but oh well. That'll make sure it ain't leaking, you know? All right, let's get that off there and I'll show you guys how goofy it looks. All right, let's get these put back on. I already got the right hand side done. I'll bring you along for this side. Pretty much the exact reverse of taking them off. At first, I thought they were going to look goofy. But after seeing them on here, I think they actually turned out pretty cool. And as hard as they were to get on here, I'm not taking them back off. Pins ain't no joke. I think cotter pins is one of the most controversial things you can do in the automotive world because everybody does them different for different reasons. All right, here we go. Alright, I got to sit back on the ground. I am going to go ahead and take advantage and hit these grease surfs in the front end while I'm thinking about it. A little bit coming out there. Coming there. Let's go ahead and get these wheel bearings again since I cleaned a lot of that out. I hate grease. All right, here we go. That will do for now. Before I put these back on, I want to go ahead and hit them with a coat of polish real quick. I know I joked there earlier in the video about how uh, these things are worth a million dollars if you can find a good set. These had some pretty good pitting on them when I first got the tractor. So I'm gonna try to keep them nice. I've already polished them once. Just gonna do something real quick. Put a little bit more treatment on them. Hopefully preserve them a little bit longer. It's looking better. Do the same on this one. I've seen several of these over the years in different tractors, spray painted. Just people do stupid things with these things. Yeah, a little bit better. All right, now let's put them on. Well, all right, guys. That's what we ended up with. I guess they don't look too bad. You can definitely tell. I mean, the right thing to do would have been to get narrower front wheels, but, you know, who does that? But I think it turned out pretty good. 
and hopefully I don't have to air them up every time I go to use this tractor. So not too bad. Eventually, obviously, I am going to get some ags for the back. And I don't know if you guys have ever priced those things, but they're a bit steep. So hoping I can get lucky and find another use set to put on this. There's really nothing wrong with these. They hold air. They do fine. But if you got tri-ribs in the front, you got to put ags in the back. So, but yeah, I don't know. Got some more things I need to do to this. Um, the main thing, one of the main issues I found, not really an issue, but just maintenance item, that nylon bushing for the uh, transmission control is pretty wallered out. I got to get some of those ordered. And the other annoying issue is this throttle linkage. It's sticking now, but when I'm running this thing wide open, um, it'll slowly come down and shut itself back off to idle. And me and the previous owner before me, we always just clamped vice grips on there and hold it, held it in place. But I need to fix it right. Um, from what I understand, you can just drill that rivet out, put your quarter inch bolt and a nylock in there to make it a little bit more taut. So when I do that, I'm gonna replace the, the knob, just some odds and ends. And like all my other tractors, this one definitely needs a seat, which are about like ag tires are stupid expensive. So it's on the list to get done, just chipping away at it, but yeah. All right, guys, I'm gonna try my hand at filming an outro here. Uh, it's my first time ever really trying to make a YouTube video. Uh, I'm normally always doing this stuff, but it seems like a lot of people get success putting it up on the, online for you people to judge and watch for entertainment. So I don't know, this was kind of a trial and error. I apologize if my edit was not quite good. I'm still learning how to do that. So, but uh, yeah, if you guys like it, like I said, subscribe. Um, you know, I know it takes a while for a channel to kind of get a, get some followers, but I got some stuff to do on the other tractors. I've already got parts for that. Um, I'll probably be filming that and hopefully get another video up here soon. So, but thanks for sticking along for this painful procedure of an easy job that was obviously complicated. So, but thanks for watching guys and see you in the next one.